Hi, I'm Martin, and today we're going to discuss data portability. So the idea is pretty simple. It's a right which allows you to ask your online service provider to either have you download all your data or ask them to transfer your data to another online service provider you want to use. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, there are several cases in which that would be very useful. For instance, if you want to stop using an online service provider, but you want to keep all of the data, your posts, your pictures, your emails. If you want to move your data from one online service provider to another, and you don't want to do it manually. Normally you can test this new right yourself. Just go on any online service provider and it should be as simple as clicking on a download button. This data should be sent to you in a commonly used machine readable structured format. What that means is when you move your data, all of the structure around the data should remain the same. So for instance, if you've ordered your pictures in different folders organized by date, they should also be ported on the new service you use. If you've classified your emails into subfolders, they should be in those subfolders. But this is not as easy as it sounds. Your online service provider has to have a similar kind of layout and service in order for your pictures, your posts to be displayed in the same way. For instance, if you move a post from Facebook to Twitter, because of the character limits, your posts might appear completely different. To get a bit more technical, your data is typically organized in database readable format like SQL, JSON, and XML. This means that your data is surrounded with plenty of extra data to put your data into context to know how to display it, where to display it, and so forth. So here we have an example of a model XML. Of course, all of this is not exactly what you'd find in an XML when you post something, but it's just an example. Here is a message that you send to your friend. Um, it's the content, hi dude, how are you? Here are the parts surrounding what you, you posted, which is called metadata. It's the data that puts your, uh, your message into context. For instance, there's your name to be able to identify you as a user. There's the time at which you posted it. There's the destination, who are you, posting, who are you sending it to. There's the hash code, which is a unique code that allows a service provider to find that message amongst its heap and huge heap of messages that they receive every day. And there's the type of message, for instance, to say, was it private? Is it something that you want to publish on your wall? You understand now the problem if you try to port this data to another service and they misread your tags. For instance, they don't recognize a private message that message could end up be posted on your public wall and that would be really problematic. So you need online service providers to sort of agree to recognize and find some way to recognize these kind of tags and that they're compatible between each other. The GDPR encourages online service providers to get together and agree on some kind of interoperable database format. But what that will mean in practice is still quite vague. One of the aims of data portability is to allow more competition. So for instance, it's the same principle as moving from mobile phone operator to another mobile phone operator and keeping your phone number and breaking the so-called lock-in effect. The lock-in effect is simply that people tend to use online services that other people use also. So if all your friends are on one social network, chances are you're going to go on that social network and not another one. As you can see, it's not as easy as just moving your data around. So while the right to data portability is far from perfect, let's see how it should work in an ideal world. Ideally, we should move into an environment where the data is separated from the services that you use. Well, what would that look like? Instead of services like Facebook gathering all your data, storing it on a huge servers, which is basically huge warehouses where you have thousands and thousands of hard drives and all your data is stored there, you can store all of that data on your own personal cloud and then grant access to that data to services like Facebook. And this logic can extend to all kinds of services. For instance, instead of uploading your video to YouTube, you upload your video on your personal cloud and then you grant access to various video sharing platforms to that same video. And so data portability would then be limited to just moving your data around from one cloud service provider to another without having to go through contacting all these various uh, online service providers that you're on. Until that happens in an ideal world, I encourage you to just try, download your data, see what it looks like, see what data is gathered, how it's structured and see how it works. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know if it worked. What was your experience, your feedback? Did you manage to get all your data? What did you think? Were you surprised by the experience? Bam! I surprised myself. Though. It's like... Okay, one more thing. Bam! That was 